Hey, hey everybody, hope you're doing well today. This is Brad Cartwright coming to you with the next installment of the How to Draw series, a collaborative effort between me and you. And today I'm coming to you from the side of the Costanera Norte. I'll explain why at the end, or maybe you can figure it out as you watch this video. The, this video is how to draw the negative externalities of consumption. Let's take a look. All right, well, here we go. We're going to take a look at how to construct this diagram for the negative externalities of consumption. Now, check it out, okay? You need to know how to build this particular diagram. And this is the base diagram for all market failure diagrams. If you don't know how to construct this diagram, stop the presses, hit pause, go up here and click on that video right there to understand how to draw the base diagram for market failure, okay? It's really critical that you know what this means and how it gets there. Even if you know how to like actually draw it, you gotta understand the meaning behind it. Otherwise, it's gonna be very difficult for you to understand how it is that um, this, this whole thing functions, okay? So we're talking about negative externalities of consumption. And one of the things that you always gotta do is think of something that is a market where the consumption of something causes a negative outcome for those people who are close by. And that negative outcome, that extra cost, is not representative in the P1Q1 price quantity combination. So the kind of the way of saying that is like if I go and buy a pack of cigarettes, right? Um, I'm gonna play, I'm gonna pay price P1. But actually, if I sit down at my at my table with my students here in Santiago and fire up a cigarette, first of all, I lose my job. But second of all, what would happen? Well, I would be damaging the lungs of all those students sitting at the table. So actually, my private benefit, right, is actually higher than the marginal social benefit. It's like I benefit more at that table than everybody else because I'm smoking the cigarette. Everyone else just sort of <laughs> suffers, right? Just sort of suffers. So the thing is, with negative externalities of consumption, the way that you account for the extra cost to uh, society as a result of me smoking the cigarettes is you express it as an outward movement of one of those two curves right there, okay? Um, and those, two, uh, outward movement, right? And what that means is actually this ma marginal private benefit curve comes out from underneath the marginal social benefit curve, and you realize that as I'm smoking my cigarette, there's actually damage being done to society that's not accounted for in the price of the cigarette. Okay, And as a result, we create something that is... I want to fix that line. Hold on one second. We create something that has a negative outcome for all of those people around us, okay? So this, so as a result, what's gonna happen is they're going to be, that's P1, and I'll draw it down here. There's Q2, right, that's this, okay? The market is actually going to operate at P2, that's not P1, that's supposed to be P2. P2, Q2, that's where the market's operating, P2, Q2. Now, that is not where the market wants or the where society wants that market to operate. We want it to be a dot B right here at B. Where do you want to be? B. If there were no smokers, right? This is where the market would function. But the thing is, there's an extra cost. Look at costs went up. Costs went up. Remember, price and cost are interchangeably, can be interchangeably thought of at times. So now the cost of society is actually higher than what would be socially optimal? So the socially optimal point is point B, but the market's actually operating up here at, we got to make it like something bad, dark, at that point there. Like, let's say that's point uh, uh, A, okay? So if the market's operating at point A, but that's not where we want to be. We want to be here. 
So as a result of that, and this is not a, a, a slide or it's not a, a video on how to solve the solutions. If you want to see us solutions to these, check out that video right there of how to solve um, negative externalities of consumption. However, this is just how to draw the diagram. And from here, you can then see like, whoa, wait a second. There's a whole bunch of stuff going on here because this right here is loss of welfare to society as a result of there being smokers, right? So right here, this triangle, A, B, wait for it, C right there, is a loss of welfare to society as a result of what? As a result of the, um, uh, the, 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 the cost of the cigarette not being included in the price. Okay, so the, if in a perfect world, the cigarettes would cost P2, but they only cost P1. And this P2 level would account for your harm if I'm blowing secondhand smoke in your face, right? So there's the diagram for negative externalities of consumption. This is the MSB curve. This is the MPB curve, right? And in the case, because it's consumption, this is another thing I probably should have said at the beginning, because it's negative externalities of consumption, then we're only going to deal with what we used to call the demand curve. Consumption. Who consumes? Demanders. Don't write demand here. Or you'll get hammered on the, on, the, on the test. But this is demand. So when it's consumption, it's always going to be this line that's going to shift. And when it, it might go in, right? But this is going to shift. Okay? When it's production, guess what? The suppliers are going to shift. That's a little secret to help you learn how to do this. Okay. The other little thing, and a, student, <laughs> and a student showed me this one time, I didn't think of it, I didn't even realize it, is that this uh, actually, check it, looks like an arrow pointing inward, right? I don't know if you can see that arrow. There's an arrow pointing inward, boom, right? And that means that you want to get back to point B. Why do you want to get back to point B? Because there's an overconsumption of cigarettes. The government wants less cigarettes to be smoked always because they are damaging to the health, not only of the person smoking, but to the people around them. All right, so there you have it. That's it. And that's how you draw and the logic behind drawing the negative externality of consumption diagram. If you are interested in seeing the other um, um, market failure diagrams, check out the playlist for how to draw the market failure um, the market failure diagrams right there. Well, there you have it. The negative externalities of consumption, a uh, kind of famous market failure diagram. What happens if you smoke a cigarette in the room? But the other thing is, what happens when you buy gasoline and put it in your car and stop off the side of the road of one of the largest interstates in all of Santiago and all of Chile and then turn on the uh, turn on the engine and burn the gas right you consume the gas you paid a certain price for the gas but guess what the damage to the environment as a result of you consuming the gasoline is not in the price of the gasoline so every single time you turn on your car or you ride in a car you are contributing to the negative externality of consumption of whatever environment you live in pretty powerful stuff market failure is everywhere 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 Make sure that you stay tuned for the next installment of the How to Draw series. Be sure to subscribe and turn on your notifications. It's such an honor that I get to be able to have this platform to communicate with you and teach you and learn from you. So make sure any suggestions you have for this channel go in the comment box below. I read all of the comments that come in to my channel. All right, my friends, be good out there. Think this world around us is our classroom and it's a privilege, a privilege to be able to think about it and learn about it and collaborate together. Good deal, my friends. Take care. We'll talk to you in a bit.